we look at our text again, Revelation 2, 8 to 11. I know I told, I mentioned last week that we probably will be ending on that, but something came up and we have to address that today. Revelation chapter 2, verse 8 to 11. And to the angel of the church in Smyrna write, This thing says the first and the last who was dead and came to life. I know your works, tribulation, and poverty, but you are rich. And I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested and you will have tribulation ten days. Be faithful until death and I will give you the crown of life. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. May the Lord bless the name of his word in Jesus' name. Amen. In our study today, we want to focus on the early uh, part of the assessment that the Lord spoke about concerning Smyrna. And that's in verse 9, the A part. He said, I know your works. I'm acquainted with your words. I'm acquainted with the things that you do. I know, I'm intimate, I'm acquainted with your tribulation because I'm, I'm going through the tribulation along with you. I also know your poverty. But you are rich. And as we discuss this segment, we would want to see how the church is viewed. I'm going to elaborate later on this. So we are, going to, we are looking at the assessment of the churches. This will be the ninth part. The church of Smyrna, the fourth part. And we are looking at the church, whose view? The church, whose view? Now, again, like I said, if we look closely at the church in Smyrna, we will see a suffering church you could call it a struggling church, a persecuted church, a poor church, and really a ridiculed church. Yet, the Lord tells them that in spite of their poverty, he said they are rich. He also encouraged them to brace up for more trouble from Satan. And it, 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 we, we know from the studies we've done that the goal of Satan is to prove to God that the church does not love him. That all the church wants is just to get something from him. So in discussing whose view, we want to see who the church should respond to. Men or God. In, in the United States of America, you hear parents complain about certain sportsmen or certain movie stars and they raise all manner of hue and cry when those men do what when those men or women do what they believe is unbecoming and when you ask them why are you so concerned about these stars they say because our children look up to them and I find it absurd that a man's child will look up to a movie star, will look up to a sportsman and not to his father and not to his mother. We have a situation in the church today where the church is taking up a view that is contrary to the view of God. We have a situation in which the church measures itself by the measurement of the righteousness, if I can use that expression, of the world, rather than by the yardstick or the standard or righteousness of God. And so we, we, need, to, we need to address this issue because we find so many people who believe that if 
there is poverty in the church or in a church, that church is not of God. That church, something is wrong with the church. We need to address these issues with a view to strengthening our faith that what God is interested in is what should matter to us, not what the world is interested in. Like the average American child, the parents should be more interested in their children, copying them, looking at them as role models, rather than looking at movie stars as their role models. The church must return to look at what God is saying about it, rather than what other people are saying about the church. 